Thank you for joining me on another video about being intentional, a series of videos named after my book by the same name, which explore the ways and means through which we can better control moments in our life and by association exert better control over the trajectory that life takes and the outcomes it achieves. And today's um, video, like most, comes from emails and questions that you have actually taken the trouble to send in and I really truly deeply appreciate all this so please keep them coming uh, and what we're going to cover today is how and why we tend to respond so strongly and so wrongly in specific situations now those of you who have read the book know that I have said before that life itself is a system that we are a system, both systems are complex, so basically they are nested systems which are made up by uh, complicated systems nested within them uh, and they become the component parts. So this complexity constitutes two entities if we take that approach. We are one, life is another, as we try to fit in into what we believe to be life, what we believe to be the world, we experience a lot of friction, we experience a lot of difficulties, um, we try and struggle to fit in into something which in theory should be fairly easy for, that, for us to actually um, do. This process is complex, it is governed by our own belief system, our own values, the values and beliefs that society pushes upon us, the expectations of others, the expectations of our parents, the expect expectations of the world really. And this kind of uh, ends up in some kind of misfit of a situation where we struggle to sort of make things work. It is difficult, it is challenging and it is damaging. And it is on the last part that I really want to focus on today. Now essentially, our journey through life is going to damage us in some way. It's going to impact negatively our idea of ourself. It's going to impact our sense of confidence. It's going to diminish perhaps our sense of ability and capability. It's going to undermine the belief that we have in ourselves and what we can actually do. Done enough times, the damage that this causes accumulates. And the end result of that accumulation is that sometimes we just give up. Life is too difficult, we go into zombie mode, we tend to go through the motions of living without actually making any key decisions, without making the kind of choices that would allow us to develop and grow and explore the potential that we have inside us. Now, some of us who are more resilient kind of patch things up as we go along we perhaps, you know, ignore some of the things which we can't change, which is the right way to deal with things which we can't change. We ignore things that have damaged us, which is definitely not the right way to deal with this. And we kind of use denial as a survival mechanism in order to be able to function. But as damage accumulates, denial itself begins to lose its potency. And then either we tend to curl up tight in ourselves, keep a very low profile, go about our business and try to interact with others as little as possible. And that usually means also giving up our hopes and dreams and aspirations. Or we are in a constant state of perpetual emotional uh, activation because we're terrified by what kind of damage we're going to uh, experience next. And that leads to constant overreaction. Healing is important. It's important in every field. It's important if you're a business, it's important if you're an athlete, it's important if you're any kind of individual. It is really truly important to us as people to be able to heal on our journey through life so that we can constantly grow, learn, develop and become better versions of ourselves. But healing is not easy. In order to achieve that, we have to acknowledge that we're damaged. We have to acknowledge that the damage has been wrought, most times inadvertently, by either a system which fails to even notice us or people who don't realize they have damaged us. The process of healing requires acknowledgement of the damage that we have suffered and forgiveness 
to others for the damage they have caused. Now, people say that, you know, forgiveness is a thing which allows us to excuse others' behavior, and this is not the case. By understanding them and forgiving them, we are basically releasing ourselves from the hold that they continue to exert upon us, which is basically the damage that we experience. So if someone has wronged you, and there's nothing you can do about it, reliving it over and over and over and over again is going to achieve nothing except holding you back from actually understanding what happened, learning and growing and moving forward. This is the same whether we're talking business, relationships, physical performance, cognitive performance, mental development. Whichever field of activity you actually see and apply this in, the process is the same. So, growing, developing, becoming better requires us all to understand that if something triggers us, if we have emotional overreactions, if we have panic attacks or anxieties, which are not easily explained, they're the result of psychological trauma that we have suffered in our journey through life. Even if we can't see the immediate cause of that, it is important for us to understand that we're vulnerable, we are weak sometimes, forgive ourselves for that kind of failure, learn from it and move forward. None of this is easy. Introspection is hard. Energetically, it requires us to examine ourselves and see truths which are hard to swallow at times. But if we do that, if we actually take that inward path, if we see ourselves and our overreactions, if we understand that sometimes something makes us feel small and powerless and it arouses fear in us, and that fear is then externalized in aggressive behavior or in behavior that is, uh, well, not really warranted within a particular situation. If we understand that our anger is not anger that is directed at a particular individual, but kind of at the world because we feel perhaps that something has wronged us, something has hurt us, something is not working for us when it should. If we understand these things, then it becomes important for us to take the steps necessary to protect ourselves. And by that, I don't mean giving in to the fight or flight response, which you know triggers a whole lot of neurochemical and biochemical reactions that result in us being perpetually angry or perpetually fearful or per perpetually resentful. Instead, we should be able to say, hey, what is it that I must do in order to be less fearful, less angry, less resentful? How do I become a kinder, better version of myself for myself? This is not an easy question to answer, I warrant you that. It is not even an easy question to ask, I will grant you that as well. But if you don't do it, then you will forever be trapped in the things that have happened to you. Which means that you can quite easily live your entire life without ever truly experiencing who you really truly can be. I sincerely hope this helps. Think about it a little bit. Keep the questions coming. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the box below for further links and resources. Stay safe out there. Stay sane. Keep getting better. Take care.